guys, it's Weston at Peak Mountain Camps. Today, I have to apologize to you right off the bat. Um, a lot of times when I do these videos or when I'm showing camps in general, I tend to skip over a lot of the features and, and different things involved in the camp just because I guess I just assume everybody kind of knows. And so for that, I apologize. So today what I want to do I just finished this frame up. I want to go through some of the features of the frames that I get a lot of questions about that I just assumed everybody kind of knew. Um, questions in regards to the step or the tongue or, you know, leaf spring setups, things like that. So anyways, we'll go ahead and look at this frame and I'll show you some of those features. Since we're right here at the front of the trailer, we'll just go through the tongue setup because this is where a lot of our questions stem from. A lot of people comment, you know, the steps. What, what is the reasoning for the step being there? Doesn't it drag when you're dr traveling down the road? Um, it's kind of in the way, things like that. And it's just one of them things, like I say, that I assumed everybody knew. Um, but this, this is actually hinged to where it'll fold up, set on top of that decking on your tongue. It's out of the way. Um, this particular camp has a two-step setup, just for the fact that they undersprung this one. The customer was concerned about the places he could get it due to the height, so it's undersprung to keep that frame or that ground clearance a little bit lower. Um, so we went with the two-step here, but it'll set just right on top of that decking, and then it's still low enough that you can open your front door everything it's not in the way that way and then yeah once you get to your destination it's just a matter of flipping it over and setting it down so kind of neat feature great use of space just kind of continues that theme of the camp of of just you know utilizing everything that we can utilize so the next thing that we'll look at that a lot of people don't don't know about the camps is this piece on this side this trim piece is actually hinged and so it'll hinge, which will allow you to pull your decking out of this top. Okay, and you can store all of your tire chocks, um, blocks, whatever in here. Um, things that you're not worried about being in the elements, but it makes for a great storage space to keep that kind of stuff, you know, so it's not in your side compartments or inside, because it seems like that kind of stuff is always dirty. So it helps keep your camp clean, uh, but kind of a nice feature to just keep, you know, a little more exterior storage. And then, like I say, it just folds up and latches. Um, really neat feature that I think just adds a little bit to the camps. The next thing that we have on this frame would be our LP tank base. Now, what we do standard on all of our camps is we do two 30 pound LP tanks, which would be seven gallon tanks. So lots of propane storage. Um, in fact, one of, one of the most frequent comments we get from our customers is how little propane the camp uses. Now, a lot of that is due to how well the, the camp is constructed, the insulation values. I mean, very seldom will the furnace kick on Seems like your fridge, your water heater, those type of things seem to run a lot better just for the fact that they, they retain that temperature a lot better. And so you're not gonna go through a lot of propane, but we do offer um, different size tanks and everything, but we do those seven gallon standard and then we'll do a cover as well. Then we have our Bulldog Jack. This is a 5,000 pound jack. I've been using this for a number of years. Really like this jack. Um, it's got your grease cert, so it's easy to keep lubed. But we do, especially recently, it seems like we've been doing a lot of electric jacks. So that's definitely an option if that's something that you want to go. Now, keep in mind, most of our camps, like this camp is a smaller camp, but it's still going to weigh anywhere from 6,500 to probably 7,500. Um, and our bigger camps are gonna come in right around, you know, 10,000. So the electric jack is nice just because, you know, you can hit that button, but then there's also issues that come with the electric jack. Whereas it seems like this one is pretty well built to where you never really have much issue with it. 
So anyways, it all comes down to the customer and what they want as far as a jack here. But like I say, we do this bulldog standard on all of them with the option of changing that out. That brings us here to this coupler. Now this is a Bulldog product as well. I'm a big fan of Bulldog products. It seems like they're built really heavy duty. They last, um, big fan of Bulldog products. This one is a two and five sixteenths ball. And then as you can see, it's got this adjustable sleeve. Now what this does for me is when a customer shows up to pick up their camp, most of the time, I don't know what their tow rig is. Um, and so this gives me some adjustability to make sure that my ride characteristics are, are as good as possible. Um, a lot of our camps, we sell them with the equalizer hitch, which is a nice benefit for me, especially. I mean, these camps pull exceptionally well with or without an equalizer hitch. They're relatively heavy as we've talked about before. So they stick to the ground really well. You don't get the wind whip and, and some of those other traits that a lot of your travel trailers have. Um, but this gives me some adjustability, but when I match it with, with our equalizer hitch, um, I also get an adjustable shank on it. And so that gives me two, two areas where I can adjust to where I can get those ride characteristics just about perfect. Um, the equalizer hitch is really nice. It's like in the name, it, it equalizes, it distributes that weight to where you can keep the ride characteristics of your tow vehicle about the same as what they are without the trailer. So really nice setup, you know, like I say, they work well with or without the equalizer hitch, but if you're doing a lot of, you know, long distance traveling and stuff, I would say, yeah, the equalizer hitch is, is definitely worth the money. So the next thing we have, is our safety chains. You've got these hooks on the bottom of the frame. The reason that I've added these is a lot of times when I'm working on trailers, especially in the winter um, or the spring, it seems like everybody's chains are always down in the mud or the snow, they're frozen to the ground. And so this is just a convenience to keep your chains up out of that stuff to where they're kind of nice and clean and I don't know, just makes it a little bit nicer. Now, this is one of those things that I think is pretty obvious to most people. All of our running lights, um, you've got your markers, everything that way. But, but one thing that kind of sets us apart, I guess, a, a little bit, especially in the, the manufacturing of sheep camps or range camps, um, is that everything that we do is DOT compliant. Okay, a lot of your manufacturers of, of your sheep and your range camps don't have certified technicians or anything that way. And so we've done our due diligence to make sure that not only are you safe, but that you're compliant with all the DOT codes, with the laws and everything. And so we make sure, you know, our marker lights, everything is, is all compliant as well as a lot of the stuff inside, you know, gas lines, things that way. We want to make sure that your experience is the best experience. And so we take our time and we make sure that we're familiar with the laws and everything to where we make a product that's compliant. So all of our DOT lights are, are going to be LEDs. There's actually a light that sits up in here that illuminates this logo. Now, it's not necessarily for DOT purposes. It's more flash than anything else. But that's one thing is, is just making sure, you know, if you're in the market, do your research, make sure you're getting something that is compliant with the laws and, and more especially, I mean, the lights and, and stuff is one thing, but if you start messing with gas or anything that way, I mean, there's, there's a lot at risk. You want to make sure that you're safe. And so, like I say, we've taken the time to become certified and become familiar with the laws. Next thing on our frames would be these mounting tabs. These are for stabilizer jacks. So this will get stabilizer jacks on all four corners. Really makes it nice when you get to that location to be able to drop those stabilizer jacks down and, and just make the camp stable. Like I say, they're, they're really stable in general anyways but this just adds to it. Then we'll move on. I think I mentioned at the first of the video that this is an undersprung. So these are a seven leaf spring 
and it's undersprung. These are 5,200 pound axles. And then it's got these deep wheel wells on it that are all metal. So yeah, if you have a blowout or anything that way, extremely stout. But the wheels are kind of tucked up in, which will make it really nice. It'll keep that center of gravity low, as well as the overall height of the camp will come down quite a bit, about six inches over being oversprung. And we come to our spare tire. So this, it's got the same size pattern as what your stabilizer jacks and everything are. So it just spins and it'll drop down. You put your spare tire on or off, whatever, whatever it is you're doing. But that's kind of a nice feature that just, you know, adds a little bit to the camp. You've got your rear stabilizer jack mounts. And then, like I said, all your DOT compliant lights, your receiver hitch, and then this will be wired also for lights and brakes and everything that way. But hopefully that answers some of your questions. Like I say, there's there's lots of variations in camps, how you spec them out, oversprung, undersprung, different suspension setups. But overall, that should cover a lot of the basics. This is just a rod, so our holding tank slide in here. If I ever have to replace a holding tank, it's just a matter of sliding it out. This is a keeper rod that kind of holds it in place. But yeah, overall, that's kind of a general overview of the frame. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and we'll try and get to them. subscribe as well as share our videos we're really trying to grow our channel to help get the word out about our product so anyways thanks for watching